Hello, this is Mr. Cisneros. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about Autodesk Inventor. We are using the AWS uh, Amazon Web Services to access Autodesk Inventor. If you need help accessing AWS and using Inventor, please look at my other video called AWS Tutorial Computer or AWS Tutorial iPad. Once you have Inventor open, um, we can get started. The one thing that we're going to be starting to model is a speaker box, a simple box here that is going to be 14 inches wide, um, 7 inches tall, and 7 inches for its depth. You can see that it is made up of about six different panels all put together. Um, you can see that the back is going to be opened, um, but it will be able to be covered with a back panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at those panels all broken up. And this again is just a rough sketch, but the important information right here, the dimensions for those rectangles is really all we need. Um, the one thing that isn't included on this are the diameters of these holes. Um, these bigger ones are going to be four inch, and then the smaller one here is going to be three quarters. So let's get started. I'm going to go to our Amazon AppStream 2.0. This is the AWS using Autodesk Inventor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new file. So if I go over here, I'm going to click on this white paper with a corner bent that is new. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to make sure that under templates, I have my ENUS folder open. And then I'm going to click on English. And then I'm going to click on standard inch IPT. If I click on this, then I go create. It will create an IPT file for me. It'll be blank, but we can start adding to it. The very first part that we're going to be creating is this front panel. So we can see that the width is going to be 14 by 7. All of the thickness of these woods are going to be the same. It's going to be half inch thick. So we have pretty much all the information that we need to get started. I'm going to go to in Inventor. I'm going to go to Start 2D Sketch. The tar Start 2D Sketch tool is on the top left corner. It's this button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to choose which plane I want to work on, which is going to be the XY. So I can hover over one of the planes. It turns green, and it should read XY plane. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. With that now selected, I can now start modeling in a sketch mode. So I can use line tool, circle tool, arc tool, rectangle. Rectangle is the one that I'm going to be using first. So if I go ahead and click on this bigger button, rectangle, I'm going to choose where I want to start. I always want to start on the origin. So if I hover over this middle intersecting point, you can see that I get this green bubble. That's what I want. That lets me know that I am on the origin. Um, when I start my rectangle with my mouse, I'm going to click and let go. I'm going to click and release. You do not need a click and hold for this. So I'm going to click and let go. And you can see that a rectangle starts to form if I move my mouse. Um, and I can decide what my width and height are going to be for this rectangle right away. You can see that my width, where it says 0.691, um, that is the one that I can change first. And that is going to be 14. So I'll type 14 in my keyboard. Now to jump over to the height, where it says 0.415, all I simply have to do is hit tab on the keyboard. If your keyboard does not have a tab button, you can simply go over with your mouse and click on this box. Uh, but since I do have tab on my keyboard, I'm going to tap or click on tab on my keyboard. It'll jump over to that height, and I can change that one as well. That one is going to be 7 inches. So once I type in 7, I can hit enter on my keyboard. And now we can see that the rectangle is formed, but we can't quite see it. It's a lot bigger than, bigger than what we have to view here. So here's a couple of things that we can do. We can either pan and zoom out using our mouse. The way we do that is by clicking on the middle roller wheel and moving our mouse. That lets us pan. And zooming out, we can push forward on the mouse, and we will slowly zoom out. Another thing that we could do over here, this is our navigation bar. There's this little magnifying glass tool. There's a little drop-down arrow right below it. If I click on that drop-down arrow, I have a couple of different zoom options. And I really like this zoom all option. If I click on that, it'll zoom my entire workspace with what I've modeled out so far. So that zoom all option right here, drop down arrow, zoom all. 
is really nice. Um, okay, so now that we've created this rectangle, we're pretty much done with our sketch mode. So we can go ahead and finish our sketch. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom all again. I can now just click on this button. It'll take me out. And what I can do now is extrude. Remember, our thickness for our wood is half an inch. So keep that in mind. We're going to go to Extrude tool right next to the Start um, 2D Sketch. So Extrude is right here. I'm going to click on that. Automatically, by default, Inventor sets it to 1 inch. But we can change that to 0.5. And then I'm going to click on OK. Now we have our panel made. Um, the only thing left to do is add those holes. Now holes are a little tricky, um, but recently they've added a lot of extra features on this hole tool here in Inventor, which makes it a little simpler than what it used to be like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this hole tool. And um, what I want to make right now, let's look at the image right here. I want to make these two um, bigger um, holes here. Let's look at the 3D model. I think, yeah, I mentioned that the diameter is going to be four there. Um, the one thing that isn't mentioned is the location. So how far is the center of this hole, how far is it away from this edge? And how far away is the center of this hole from this top edge? That is what we have to worry about. We have to locate it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, um, at least for this distance here, that's going to be three and a half inches away from the edge. And then from the top edge, um, since this is seven, I think we'll also do three and a half that way. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Inventor. And with the whole tool selected, we're just going to randomly on this board um, pick two points. So one and two. We can, since these two holes are going to be the same size, we can make them at the same time. That third hole, that's going to be three quarters of an inch. That one we have to use a separate hole tool. So here, uh, right away, Inventor is asking us, okay, what is the diameter of this hole going to be? Um, and we can set it to four. So I'm going to type in four. And you see that both of them are changed. Uh, what we can do now is we can locate the holes. And when we locate them, we do have to locate them separately. Um, all we have to do is simply click on what edge we want to reference. So if I'm, you know, if this hole is selected, then all I need to do is select this reference edge. I click and it asks, okay, how far do you want that to be? I'm going to type in 3.5. That moves it over, and then I can also reference this top edge. And I can say, okay, if I click on that, I can say 3.5 as well. It starts to move it. And now what if I want to locate this one? This one hasn't moved. All I have to do is simply click on that middle point, and it'll jump over to that one being selected, and I can choose my edges as well. So I'll click on this top edge, 3.5 is what I'll type in. And then this edge is the one that I will reference um, I won't want to use this one because then it'll just make us do more math. We don't want to do that right now. So we can click on this edge, and again, we'll type in 3.5. All right, once we've done that, we've chosen the diameter and we've located the holes, we can click OK. Now all that's left to do, if we look at this 3D cube here, we can actually click on the front to see how that looks. And it looks like it's spaced out pretty well. Um, all we have to do now is add that third hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hole tool one more time. We're going to randomly click on this panel here, because um, remember we can set the, the size and the location afterwards. Click, and you can see that the, the diameter is still set at 4. That's way too big. We're going to do 3 quarters, so 0.75. And then we can just simply locate it from this top edge. We'll make it 1 inch away from that top edge. And then we can either click on the right or the left reference line. Um, it doesn't matter because it'll be the same distance either way. If I click on this edge, um, we want it right in the middle. We know that this total width is 14, so half of that is going to be 7. And now we have it located. We have the diameter set. We can go ahead and click OK. We are now done with the front panel. All that's left to do is save. You can see at the bottom right, it might say part 1, part 2, depending on how many different things you've made today. Um, you don't want to leave it as as this name. You want to give it a specific name so you can go and look for it later and you know exactly what it's called and where it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it to our Google Drive. I'm going to hit File, Save As. 
I'm going to go to my Google Drive, which is already selected. It's already selected my speaker box. If this doesn't show up for you, just simply click on this drop down arrow and then you can go to Google Drive, you can go to your IED folder, and then you can go to your speaker folder. Since I already have that speaker folder selected, or at least I did, um, here, maybe let me just go through this. Um, depending on how much you have on your Google Drive, it might take a while to load all of your folders. Um, you can see that this is taking a bit of time um, to load mine. Uh, but if you guys don't have much in your Google Drive, then this should be a lot quicker. You can see it's still loading here. Might take about 30 seconds or something like that uh, for me. I just have so many files on Google Drive. It takes a little bit of time for it to populate. There it goes. And I can just scroll through. I can look for PLTW IED 2021. I can go to speaker box. Might take a second to open that up. There it is. And now I can give this a name. So the name that you want to give this is going to be your initials. These are my initials. You choose yours. Initials underscore front. Okay. And then you can click on save and you will be done. That is it. Um, we will have another video for all of the other panels. We'll see you in the next one.